It was uh, no doubt it's a security failure. Anytime your protectee is assaulted or shot at or shot, that's that's an absolute failure. Uh, no doubt about it. And this is going to be, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of study about what went on here. There's going to be a deep dive into this, and uh, we'll get some answers soon. Yeah. I'm wondering, you know, what sort of level of security, Trump sort of has a rally almost every other day, what level of security is normally planned for an event like this? Well, it depends on the event, you know, whether it's inside or outside. Uh, the Secret Service has a time-tested protocol on how to set these things up. They normally do a very thorough job. It begins with the intelligence, you know, researching potential threats in the area where the engagement is on up to the advanced work and the assessment of the actual venue. And then uh, during the event, they're very well trained to spot emerging threats that they may not have anticipated. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's an extensive amount of work, but, you know, no matter how you slice it here, and uh, the Secret Service, I'm sure, feels the same way. Uh, that rooftop was missed. It was left open for some reason. And uh, there's going to be hard questions about that. And we really need to know why that was done. And the Secret Service is a very agile agency. They're going to make adjustments and they're going to close that gap in the future, no doubt about it. Yeah. You know, to your point about mi missing that particular rooftop, there was also um, a lot of discussion. There's been discussion. People have said that they were pointing to that rooftop. They were telling officers that he could be seen, that they saw him crawling along that rooftop. Why then did they not respond quickly? You know, it's it's going to it's hard to say right now because all we have is the media reports and individuals who have uh, posted things online. But when you do the the after action review, they're really going to look at that timeline down to the millisecond. Who knew what when? What was said? What was communicated? When somebody became aware? And what appears now is it may be an extended period of time between in information passed and reaction. When we look at the timeline, we might be surprised that it is pretty quick. You know, the officers did respond fast, the uniformed officers, did look up there. And when the officers saw the individual up there, he was actually standing on a fellow officer's shoulders and uh, was boosted up there. And the suspect pointed his rifle at him, causing him to fall backwards onto the ground. And within a second or two of that, shots rang out and then the issue was quickly resolved. But uh, yeah, there's, there's no way uh, to couch this any other way than a failure. And uh, there's gonna be some really good lessons learned from this. And hopefully it never happens again. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you, you're well aware of all the conspiracy theories that are already abounding. They were abounding within minutes, you know. Um, but one thing the authorities seem to be very clear on, that he acted alone. This was a lone wolf attack and they found other devices at his home. But there are theories uh, that to have been such a failure security-wise that he, should, he couldn't have been acting alone. What would you say to that? You know, it's really going to come down to the FBI's investigation and how they really look deep into his electronic means of communication, his computer, his cell phone. I know they're saying now that his footprint on social media was minimal. But they're going to tear this apart by interviewing hundreds, if not thousands of people over the course of the next several months to try to put together a good view on this guy. And the number one thing is to find out, was he supported by somebody? Was he supported by somebody outside the country? Was he supported by other individuals within the country? That's critical to know. But at the end of the day, many of these things, like we saw with the John Hinckley assassination of, of Reagan, it's a lone wolf. It's somebody who's disturbed, who for whatever reason decided to take their, their philosophy or the animosity out by using violence. And we have to be prepared that, that maybe that is the situation, one individual acting alone. And I know there's a lot of conspiracy theorists out there. They're going to be all over the, the social media talking this and that. But you know, when we look at these, we look at hard facts. We look at evidence. And I can tell you that the, uh, the FBI is going to approach this as if it's another 9-11. I mean, they're going to put the resources that are going to be unbelievable on top of this. So you're going to get a very accurate finding at the end of the day, along with the other agencies that will be helping with this. Butler County is going to be right in the middle of it. They're going to be providing their investigators and helping with the background of this individual since he was local to there. Uh, so it's it's gonna we're gonna have some good facts here coming out. Unfortunately, time is not our friend on this. It's gonna take months to get everything sorted out. Yeah, and you've got the Republican convention. You'll have the Democrat convention. You'll have multiple rallies over the next couple of months in the lead up to the election. Absolutely, there's gonna be the candidates naturally have to get out there and communicate. 
and they have to get out there in the open. They've got to get into venues. Their job is to get in front of the American people, and they can't do it simply just through media. They have to make it live. They got to go out there. Right. So you know, and they know that uh, the Sec Secret Service knows that. They live this every day, and there's there's probably hundreds of threats every year that are interdicted and stopped by the Secret Service that we never hear about. So they do a great job. That day they did a great job. Once the incident happened, they fell right into their training. They protected the president. They neutralized the threat. So they did a lot of things right here and averted a potential a greater tragedy. But that still doesn't take away from the fact that they missed something. Yeah. And we're going to have to look at that and, uh, and learn from that. We have to remember, as you say, that, that it is an incredibly huge task that they are given, um, particularly in this climate. I'm interested in what you made of Donald Trump's response. He seemed to be very keen to sort of emerge as the, as the security services were trying to shut him down and to cover him. He wanted to be seen giving that fist pump. How, how do officers deal with that when really their job is to shelter him and protect him? You know, you're right. He's, he's a big personality. I mean, uh, <laughs> Mr. Trump is, is, I mean, he, he owns the room when he's in it. I mean, that's his personality. And the Secret Service knows that. And they, they work around that like they do with every candidate. Uh, you know, and, and the actions, you know, at the time the shots went off and he was hit, he went down, Secret Service covered him. We also have to remember they're communicating very quickly and very directly with their snipers and with other tactical individuals on the ground through their earpieces. And they're getting updated information to the second. And they make a decision when and how to move them off that platform. So people are, you see a lot of people out there dissecting this, saying, well, they should have moved faster, they should have done this. Well, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. But these are consummate professionals. And what they did was done for a reason in the moment. Yeah. And I have full confidence that they did the right thing uh, and moved him in as quickly as they could. And, uh, you know, given the size, Mr. Trump's not a small guy. He's a tall, he's a very big, powerful man. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's hard did. to contain him, they really, isn't it? Do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, such, Absolutely. Yeah, interesting times. Let's hope the climate settles, as both sides are saying, because it's a, a, a very tough job. Michael, really, uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.